The entire Tunisia attack is more related to Swiss Nazis, Swiss FIFA, Swiss Islamofascism, Swiss banks, Swiss chemical factories, Zurich, Switzerland and football than it is to Islam and Jihad. As it has come out now that the attacker was high on amphetamines from a product called phenethylin, also sold as Kaptagon, like Octagon, widely used in the Syrian war and apparently by ISIS, but highly forbidden by Al Qaeda, as all drugs are forbidden in Islam. And here we can see again the link with Nazism, Octagon, and the Swiss mastermind behind Nazism, as all German soldiers were high on, on amphetamines during. Uh, using uh, pervitin, which they called panzer chocolade or, that, or chank, tank chocolate, which made them absolutely ruthless, merciless killers with their parasite army without proper logistics, bringing no food to the German soldiers. So they could hang on with pervitin and fetamins coming from the house of Pharaoh with the word per in pervitin in it of the per a. Per het or per tasser. And both the Nazis and ISIS were and are financed by the Swiss and their financial crime institutions. And again, instead of the jihadi Islam connection, we can see yet another link with football, as this Kaptagon product is being used by some professional soccer players. Or if you dig into it, at the end of the line it will probably appear that the producing factory being a daughter company of Swiss Novartis, the Swiss chemical giant, and probably biggest manufacturer in the world of psychopharmaca. So when Octogon dropped him off at the beach, the Tunisia beach killer I mean, they probably had him drink a soda with amphetamines in it without him knowing, saying the beach was full of British soldiers on a holiday from the war against Islam, which might have been partly true though. So here it says, Kaptagon, it's like Octogon, Kaptagon, it's the same. And every time, so here are those Kaptagon pills, or Kaptagon, if you would pronounce it in English. And here it says Kaptagon, the trademark from for the synthetic stimulant phenethylin. You know, phenethylin, Kaptagon, pervitin, it's all the same. Just as the church killer a couple of weeks ago in America, he was on drugs as well, apparently. Every time these guys who killed people randomly somewhere, every time they're on drugs. So through the amphetamines, pervitin, captagon, phenethylin, in wars we can see there's definitely a link between ISIS, the Nazis and Islamofascism through the same mastermind behind giving the soldiers the very same drug which turns them into ruthless assassins as the enemy within has made good experiences with the drug in World War II. The same techniques, the same modus operandi, by the same mastermind behind the screens. And here it says again there's the, um, the relation between phenethylin, it says, or captagon, phenethylin. Uh, it, was, it was used by uh, football players. Here it says, football players. So again, you know, the racial profiling on Tunisia's uh, soccer player, the national hero of Tunisia. Uh, the, uh, the attacker was a, a, a football fan. These, this drug was used by football, by soccer players. So again, there's a relation with football all the time. And this drug is forbidden by Al-Qaeda. So there's no relation with Islam. Jihad is really. Here it says, with the exception of Al Qaeda linked groups, which most 
mostly hold to a strict interpretation of Islamic law. So Al-Qaeda and all these, they are the ones, the real Muslims, they don't use these drugs. And of course Al-Qaeda was, was founded by, by this, uh, by, by this, I might say, a saint. Bin Laden was a saint. He stopped the drug trafficking and drug, drugs production of opium in Afghanistan. It dropped from 90% to zero absolutely zero and that went immediately up again in 2000 and uh, when the when the um, when the Americans came in after 9-11 in 2011 so there's a very big difference between Al-Qaeda and ISIS it's completely opposite Al-Qaeda does not like drugs they forbid drugs and that's a big difference I think it's very important to understand who is who, of which I explain more. And these drugs, in fact, are part of the transhumanism agenda, reshaping man away from God's creation and therefore a devilish sin, and against the will of Allah, satanic techniques to make controllable assassins out of man and created by the forces of darkness from the Alps. I have to tell you, I'm, 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 I'm not a religious person, but um, this transhumanism is very, very evil. And these drugs were given to the ISIS uh, attackers, um, it, it's very evil. So concerning the evil in it, I totally agree. And I show this picture, the glory of God, because the, I know that the real Muslims, the real Al-Qaeda guys, this is the thing they're fighting against. They don't use this sort of things. They hate this. So there's something else behind it. I'm telling you, the Nazis, Switzerland, Octagon, the Nazi Templars, Pharaoh, has nothing to do with Islam. And again, I'm not religious. I'm not a Muslim. I'm not a Christian. But it has nothing to do with people who believe in the creation or who believe in God. This is pure transhumanism. They want to replace mankind, the, the, the totality of nature, with Monsanto. Um, they, go, they want to replace it. And they create chaos through wars. And this is what's happening. And their base is Switzerland, whenever ever happens anything. They're so neutral, clean and innocent, where all the money is. So go and watch this video here on this channel here, where I put all the facts together concerning the uh, Tunisia attacks in a two-hour video, a document, documentary. So all evidence leads to Switzerland and their octagon Nazi Templars, the base of all evil. And as Swissy was so angry after the FIFA arrests, ordered by the Americans on May 27th in Zurich. The very next day, they threw the Tunisian national soccer hero to the ground. Also in Zurich, every time in Zurich, Hitler in Zurich, always in Zurich, Oprah Winfrey in Zurich, because Octagon's target from the beginning has been Tunisia.